Hey, thanks for watching another episode of Answering a Call. I'm Pastor Chuck Reese, your show host and executive producer. This is a series all about evangelism and discipleship, and we're serious about highlighting ministries that are doing that all around the world. Our next story comes from Tulsa, Oklahoma, Wings of Freedom. With me is the founder, the CEO, Pastor Dixie Pebworth. Pastor Dixie, thank you so much for spending some time with our viewers. Thanks for having me on, Chuck. Appreciate it. You have an amazing story. You know, we started talking about the Lindell Recovery Network and your testimony and the work that you're doing here in Tulsa. But tell our viewers a little bit about how God put it on your heart to even start this ministry. Well, Wings of Freedom is a sober living community. And what we try and do is help people to heal their broken hearts, to bring deliverance into them, open blind eyes, and restore their life. In 2001, I had a spiritual father of mine that had a four-story building and had 27 units in that uh, four-story building. And he gave me the set of keys to the building. He says, here, start your program, and when, it, when the money comes in, pay me rent. And the, my only requirement is start with women and women with children because they have the, the hardest time finding a safe place to go where they're not used and abused. So in 2001, we started Wings of Freedom. And then in 2003, we started our church called God Shining Light. And in 2003, I had a guy come in with a, a three-bedroom, two-bath house and said, here, I see what you're doing with the women's program. Start, a women, start the men's program. And when the money comes in, pay me. And so in that, we just started growing. Right. Uh, it was based on healing the brokenhearted. It was yeah. based on uh, setting the captives free, helping a person restore their lives. It's a hand yeah. up. It's not a hand down. Right. Uh, we're trying to teach people to fish, trying to teach people how to survive in society in a right way. Uh, over the years, we've helped men and, 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 and men with children, women and women with children. And then we realized when we got our first set of apartment complexes that we could help families and families with children, uh, married right. couples. Right. And so God began to escalate it and let it grow uh, to the point today we have, you know, over 100 apartments that we manage and we create sober communities. Yeah. And, and it's a place where we control the environment and it's conducive for them to heal. It's conducive for them to be restored and put their lives back together. And then we give them boundaries and we give them disciplines to follow. Yeah. And, and God has used it in a mighty way. We, yeah. We've touched thousands of people. Yeah, that's interesting. Well, we know addiction and recovery is just a big uh, topic. And there's a lot of 30, 60, 90 day models. And then there's your long term, nine months, you know, 12, 15 months. Some people just aren't ready to live in low income housing areas where those temptations oh, are yeah. living right next door. So yeah. Talk a little bit about that. I mean, you well, know, there's a we process. Well, we used to, yeah, we used to have time limits on our on our, on our clients staying with us, yeah. uh, because whenever you're out there all alone fighting that addiction, right. you, you, it's hard to do it all by yourself. Yeah. But when you create a community and a support system around you, right. it empowers you yeah. to go to the next level. Right. Yeah. There's a lot to talk about. We'll take a break and uh, okay. we'll come back. But uh, keep watching. We're going to talk a little bit more about what God is doing here in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and how you can play a part and get involved and answer the call. I never dreamed when I said I was going to be a CFO of a company that it would be a company that I could work alongside my husband and share in a ministry that would help people that were in the situation that I was in when he went to prison. They created the businesses. I think in the beginning it was for those that were going to be hard to employ because there's a lot of those. And so it gives them the jobs and gives them a, a chance to get back into society as a productive citizen and it kind of trains them up and then it brings in the revenue to help support our Wings of Freedom program for those other ones that are coming in that want to get their lives together and uh, get to know Christ. The vision and the mission is to help those that are broken hearted, that are in need, those that everybody else thinks they are throwaways, that think that, that nobody loves them and nobody wants them, those that think that they have failed and have no hope and no dreams of ever being sober and living a good life again. I want everybody that I can possibly share it with to know the love that God has for you. As you watch people come in from the streets, from the prisons, from the rehabs, from the downtrodden. We just want to show them the love of God, the grace of God, the peace of God, and because God's there, because we love them as human beings, as God's children. And you're not allowed to whoop upon God's child.
Well, when I first came into the program, you know, I was pretty broken. I was really broken. I would have never sat here in front of you guys. You know, I lived most of my life in fear. You know, I was trafficked um, at a young age. You know, I've lost two of my sons. It was about changing my life, and it took time. Six months was sure not enough, but that's why I wanted to keep going in this program. But I'm just now beginning. It's just starting. Everything that this program's offering me to go to these classes and to be in church. I started Signs and Wonders Ministry. I've never done sign language and I never knew nothing about it. I just seen the women up there and I wanted that. The fact that I wanted it, God just gave it to me because it strengthened my praise and worship and my connection with God. It changed everything because if it wasn't for these classes and these rules and the structure and the accountability, I wouldn't have made it this far. The heartbeat of the Wings of Freedom is the people in the Wings of Freedom. We're like a family. I've never seen anything like this, man. I come from brokenness. The step study is where I found my healing. I tried doing this alone my whole life, man. Then I got introduced to the Bible. I'm just trying to serve Him today. That's all I'm trying to do is serve Him. Servant, that's my title. I'm not here for anything but people. I adopted another man's vision because it's beautiful. It's more beautiful than anything I've ever experienced. And the more I stay, the more beautiful it gets. So I'm not going anywhere. Celebrate what Jesus is doing throughout the nation and rise up to answer His call on your life. To serve the poor, heal the broken, free the captives, and bring joy to those in need. Find hope, encouragement, and motivation through Overcomers TV. This inspiring network features everyday people and ministries across America who are putting God's love in action. Tune in to Overcomers TV on your favorite app or streaming platform. It's time to overcome. Thanks for continuing to watch this episode of Answering a Call. We're so excited to be visiting Wings of Freedom here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Pastor Dixie Pebworth, uh, the founder. So evangelism, that's the heart of a pastor. Anybody who's been saved should really be concerned about other people's salvation. So oh, yeah. talk about evangelistic efforts through Wings of Freedom. Well, you know, Chuck, I go back to my life. Whenever I was laying at the lowest point of my life, being in that county jail, and God sent that man to me and said, I come here to tell you God loves you. There is an integral part of time that a person can get witness to and get saved. And so to me, we, we follow, you know, Matthew chapter 25 and Luke 4:18 and 4:19 when it comes to evangelism. Because yeah. Jesus laid it out. When I was sick, you visited me. When I was in prison, you came into me. When I was naked, you clothed me. When I was hungry, you fed me. When I was thirsty, you gave me to drink. And then in Luke 4, 18, where it talks about the brokenhearted, the, those that are in captivity, those who have been bruised by the world. Well, we're looking for those type people yeah. to be able to share the gospel with. The gospel is always the good news about Jesus Christ. Amen. It's never the doom and gloom news. It's, right. it's not what <laughs> Jesus intended it to be. It was all about the gospel. Yeah. Do you guys do some outreaches? You know, oh, yeah. You're going into prison. You talked yes. about that. But well, we go, we, every month we go into a men's prison, go into a women's prison. And also I'm going yeah. weekly into the men's prison teaching a class. Right. Uh, we're always looking for volunteers to get involved with the prison. Yeah. But also we try and prepare them when they get out. But then while we're on the streets, we, ha we partner up with street ministries yeah. that go out into the highways and the byways that yeah. go into the street sharing the gospel. Uh, last year, we, we gathered up 50 backpacks and we filled them up with hygiene items. We filled them up with bottles of water, toothbrush, toothpaste, various other things that someone may need, set of gloves, a, a, a beanie on their head, something to keep them warm. And then we went out and just passed them out for free. Now, we didn't just give them away. We wanted to know their name. Hey, we want, do you need any help? Can we pray with you about mm -hmm. something? Mm -hmm. Whenever a person knows that you care, they'll share what they need. Yeah. Uh, but if they think you're just religious and you're, you're just trying to condemn them or scare them, then they're not going to receive yeah. the oppression of this world keeps getting worse and worse. And the only hope we have is the gospel. Amen. The gospel is going to shine brighter and brighter as the world shines or gets darker and darker. Amen. And But we got to keep the light shining. Amen. 
Amen. That's awesome. Stay tuned. We're going to talk a little bit more about evangelism. We have staff. We have people that have been through the program, some supporters of this ministry. So you too can answer the call and learn how to get involved with uh, Wings of Freedom here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Keep watching. My drug addiction started when I was 16, uh, and I'm 25 now, and I've been sober for almost two years off of opiates. Proverbs 24, um, 16, where a righteous man falls seven times and rises back up. That's really been on my heart lately. Because you can't just stay stuck. You can fall, but you have to get back up. And if you stay stuck, then it's just not good. Wings of Freedom. They're very supportive. They're there for you. If you're going through something, they check on you. It's just a really good support system, especially if you don't have anybody. If you could have seen me 17 years ago to who I am today, it's like, look what God can do, because that's what He does. He comes in and changes us from the inside out, and I want to help that next person be that, to think that, to do that, and that's why I do what I do for that next generation that doesn't have to walk in my shoes. It's all about sharing Christ's love and being Christ-like. What would Jesus do? He would pick you up and take you to where you need to go and walk with beside you to accomplish the things you need to accomplish and teach. And I want to give that to other people. I want them to know that they are loved, that they are accepted, I want other people to feel that acceptance, that love of Christ. I learned about Wings of Freedom when I was locked up in the prison. I was doing time for drugs. and I felt like I needed more structure to learn how to live life responsibly. We had weekly meetings, weekly church services. Uh, we had different classes. And just it gave me the opportunity to really form a relationship with Christ. Most of us, including myself, are either ex-addicts, ex-inmates. Uh, we've gone down a road that we probably didn't, shouldn't have gone down. The ministry keeps me on track as well as the ministry helps the client stay on track. For the addicts and people that are still hurting out in the world, just try it. I ask you to try it for 30 days. And if God hasn't done anything for you in 30 days, then you can continue on what you want to do but just try 30 days. Everybody here is committed out of love. Not for one another and not to impress each other. It's about God. It's about transforming lives. It's about moving people with love. Not with anger, not with hardship, with love. If I can make somebody else smile or make them happy, share Jesus' love with them, then that makes me happy. Praise God. I just want to love on people just like Jesus. How would you like to partner with Overcomers TV? Become a ministry partner, spreading the good news about your ministry and Jesus Christ. We're selecting ministries for upcoming episodes of Answering the Call. We can also help you produce your own show. Partnering with us is easier than you think. Just visit our website, OvercomersTV.live Be an Overcomer today with Overcomers TV. Well, thanks for continuing to watch this episode of Answering the Call. We're so excited to be in Tulsa, Oklahoma, visiting Wings of Freedom with me, Pastor Dixie Pebworth. And we're just really talking about discipleship next. It's, it's all about making disciples. That's the Great Commission. So Wings of Freedom, talk a bit about the process of people coming in 
the assessment. How does the discipleship work here? Well, the first thing, uh, for someone coming into Wings of Freedom, it's an application process, and then we kind of vet them. We try and see if Wings of Freedom is for them or they're for Wings of Freedom because we can't help everybody, right. and that's one of the things we had to learn. And then Wings of Freedom is based on a four-phase tier. Uh, it's a minimum of six months, can, but it lasts as long as a year or five years. I've had some people, it took them two or three years to graduate uh, the Wings of Freedom. The number one goal is we get, they got to have six months clean and sober. They have to be uh, employed for, for six months and, and current on their rents and their program fees, and then attending all their meetings and passing all their drug and alcohol tests. Those are basically the criteria for graduation but during that we also have discipleship in the program right. the program can be as tight as we want it or as loose as we want it depending on the individual right. because we deal with each person individually we don't deal with a whole group at the same time as far as you know you got to heal the way I healed or you I got to heal the way right. you heal yeah. what we want to do is disciple them in their areas and yeah. on their level of where they're at lots of dynamics right oh you know, there's so many different family dynamics. situation mm -hmm. work situation is well yeah right. they got a child involved did they come out of prison or have they been a drug addict for how long or an alcoholic or have they been homeless for an extended period of time and what caused that and you got to identify those things with our staff is what we do is we begin to identify the needs or the, or the wants of that person right. and really what that person needs to focus on. It's all about kingdom building. It's all about learning the kingdom of God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things will be added into you. So we try and get them involved immediately in seeking the Lord. Daily devotions, daily right. Bible study, daily journaling if possible, right. uh, daily prayer, daily worship. Yeah. These are just the basics of any right. Christian foundation of changing a person's life. Right. Well, let's talk a little bit about the location. Obviously, you're looking at uh, you know, the corporate office where you got the trailer business and then right down the street is this motel right before the church. Mm -hmm. seems like if this was Monopoly, God owns it all. Yeah. He's giving you some prime real estate, all centrally located. Mm -hmm. And we saw the motel you showed us. It's going to take some labor of love. So you're probably looking at contractors and people to donate all kinds of things to help build this stuff out. Anything for construction. Right now, the 107 apartments that I have managed, they're full. I have no other space to put more people in. Right. And so in that, we want to expand our program even that much more. The motel I purchased has 134 rooms, and we're looking to turn them into efficiencies instead of motel rooms. Uh, it gives a person a place to stay and a place to live all right. within one room. And it's going to be uh, anywhere from a 3 to $5 million project. Yeah. And to complete the whole thing. Uh, and, and we're looking at, you know, efficiencies, one bedroom apartments, two bedroom apartments, and three bedroom apartments, yeah. because we also try and restore the family. Right. And they have a boy and a girl, and you got to have a two or three bedroom apartment for them right. to live in right. to be restored. Amen to that. Well, listen, stay tuned. We're going to get some more testimonies, some more interviews, talking about discipleship here, Wings of Freedom, Tulsa, Oklahoma, so you two can get involved and answer the call. When we first bought the property, people were like going, why would you buy a motel in a drug infested area? And it was like, that, it, this is prime for us because we're going to change it around instead of it being drug infested. We're going to be able to provide a sober community for people to come. And it's very needed, obviously, because there's drugs that have been going through it. So it's needed to have that ability to, to take care of them. I can see how many people it's going to be helping that's coming out. Or, or people that's out here on the street that needs help. And it's something that's going to help a lot of people. Having the motel is a blessing when we get it up and running because it opens it up to more people. We started out downtown on East 12th Street here in Tulsa with uh, just a couple of floors for women and their children. And then we exploded to uh, houses and then apartments. But with the motel, we can go to 500 maybe. The hotel also has in back of it, we have a two-story building in the back, which is going to be the phase three, and that's going to be the studio apartments for families um, that have children. So that gives an opportunity to have their own space, or if they have a DHS case, they need their own room. So we encourage reunification of families. It's very knitted together. We're very family-oriented. There's a big calling for this. There's a lot of programs that do not reach the type of people that I believe that this ministry reaches. I've seen the homeless people sitting in dumpsters eating. And I remember I used to be there. I used to be that guy right here on 11th Street. 
Wings of Freedom does so much to help the people like me. This is about God. This is about doing the right thing. To show people how Christ can get inside of you through the Holy Spirit and work on its way out until your life transforms into what is beneficial for everybody. Wings of Freedom is now accepting financial donations and also in-kind donations, including building materials, services, and labor, as well as items needed for the apartments when the renovation is complete to get this hotel transformed from a former drug site to a place of refuge where people can be restored through the power and love of Jesus Christ. To donate, visit wingsoffreedomok.com or call 918-584-8879. Horizon Media Studios, producers of the television series Answering the Call, is looking for Christ-centered, Bible-believing ministries to feature ministries like homeless shelters, children's homes, mission-sending centers, and more. We want to raise awareness of ministries and also mobilize the body of Christ to get involved and answer the call. Tell us about your favorite ministry. Email us at info at atctv.org. Tune in to Overcomers TV on your favorite app or streaming platform. It's time to overcome. Well, thanks for continuing to watch this episode of Answering the Call on Overcomers TV. And we're so excited to hear Pastor Dixie Pebworth talk about ways to get involved with Wings of Freedom. Tulsa, Oklahoma, um, again, it's a lot of work to deal with recovery, but how can people get involved with a ministry like this? Well, you know, first off, Chuck, we, like, we love prayer. We need lots of prayer. I mean, we're moving the darkness. We're destroying the attacks of the enemy. So we get a lot of attacks. So, you know, prayer really helps. And we need people to be praying for Wings of Freedom at any given point in time that the Wings of Freedom comes to their heart. Uh, because we're dealing with people coming out of suicide, coming out off of homelessness and brokenness. And so we need prayer. Uh, we also take in-kind donations at any given point in time. Uh, anything that would help a person restore their life. Uh, we have people come in with absolutely nothing. Two little bags, Walmart bags that they got. Uh, and that's all the possessions they own. Yeah. So anything that would begin to help a person put their lives back together, we receive in-kind donations constantly. Whether right. it be, we're, we're at the warehouse. You showed us that yesterday. Yeah, well, and we have a full warehouse that we, we take furniture, we take uh, bedding, we take clothing, we take, you know, anything that a person needs in life to restore their life. Uh, and, that, and we try and give that to them uh, whenever they first come into the program. Uh, we also, I mean, hygiene items, anything that a person would use to, to bathe or to, you know, begin to feel better about themselves. I mean, yeah. sometimes we get, we get makeup donated for some of the ladies and it just makes them feel so good. Right. Uh, and so those are some of the things that we can always use in kind donations. We also yeah. can use automobiles. I mean, if people have automobiles, it's just sitting in the yard and they, they want us to come pick them up. We'd be glad to do that. Uh, anything that uh, can help a person get back up on their feet and accomplishing what God would have them to do. Also yeah. financial. Yeah. Uh, we can always use financial help. Sometimes they want to sponsor a client uh, for a month's worth of rent or for six months or, you know, they just want to give into the program because we need financial support. Everything we've done Done. We've never had government funding, never had tax funding or anything like that. And we've done it with a wheel within a wheel. We've created businesses to give jobs, and we've helped to try and make it self-sustaining. But as we go forward with the new project that we have, uh, yeah, I purchased a motel uh, in the middle of a pandemic. And I asked God, God, why am I purchasing a motel in the middle of a pandemic? He says, because you're going to need yeah, one. Right, exactly. And so in that, he showed me that we're going to be needing, as time goes forward, we're going to need be needing more space. That's good. That's so awesome. Yeah. Stay tuned. We're going to get some more interviews from folks that are a part of Wings of Freedom here in Tulsa, Oklahoma, so you can answer the call and get involved. Keep watching. Oh, you ready to check out some Wings of Freedom? Pretty good. God bless you. These are little mustard seed necklaces that I make and I pray over them. Because it just takes faith the size of one mustard seed to move mountains. Because with God, all things are possible.
to get involved. We always need mentors. We need people to help donate, like things to get set up in an apartment. We need them to come in and just kind of guide them and, and love them through it. Always, always donations are nice. And we always need clothes. We always need hygiene. We always need toys for kids. It'd be nice to see a shelf full of brand new toys all the time, but we take what we can get and we use it. But we need people actively involved. This is also where the Eddie Warrior Christmas bags start. We give Christmas bags to all the girls in Eddie Warriors, which is about 800 to 1,000 bags every year. We get school supplies, we get a chapstick, we get hair ties, all those things. And we've already started putting those away this year for next year. The people that want to volunteer and that want to donate, you know, we had the Wings of Freedom Banquet, which is a really big blessing, you know, when people come to things like that. But I think that once they see how many lives are being changed and families being restored, that they would want to. A lot of ways to get involved in Wings of Freedom. Praying, donations, funds that can come in, hands on deck. A carpenter or, you know, a painter or people that lay tile, carpet, whatever, to help and just give their, a little bit of their time to help with this motel. It's definitely important for everybody to get involved because this program works. This program puts God first, and with putting God first, you will succeed. He gives you all the tools that you need to stay sober. No matter what situation, circumstances you face, God's going to have some scripture for you for no matter what you're facing through, and no matter what you're going through. So it's so important to have that word inside of you. They're raising funds for a motel that they're actually turning into an apartment thing. Dixie's always improvising, make, looking up for ways to be able to pour back into his community, which is the Wings of Freedom in the Church of God. I see what Dixie's done and I think that it's an amazing thing that he has actually just put so many different apartment complexes and he's working on the next one in order to help individuals like myself. There's a lot of ways that people can help support Wings of Freedom um, and get involved. They can pray for us, donations to the warehouse. We serve a mighty God. We serve a powerful God. And, and if we get enough people praying, supporting this idea, this vision that he's got, the vision that I'm plugged into, but God has told me to stay here because I can see his vision. I can see how many people it's going to be helping that's coming out or people that's out here on the street that needs help, but I know God's gonna make it happen.